What's going on, guys? Welcome to All Access Magic. Uh, my name is Ryan, the host of this guy over here. Oh, I have to go this oh, way. This now. way is Blaze Sarah. Welcome, everybody, to the show. We have a really, really exciting episode for you today. It's, uh, it's, it's been a fun up. week. We've been uh, doing our 30 for 30 challenge, so getting jacked. And uh, it's been a fun time. Yeah. Uh, Ryan has been cheating at his uh, 30 for 30 in uh, that he believes that he can. Every day. <laughs> That's he it. believes he can train his cartoon avatar to be fit, and then that will count as fitness in the real Bro, world. I'm telling you, this thing, you'll be sweating. It's gross. <laughs> My shoulders are burning. But I'm going to do the rest of the podcast in uh, in VR. So dude, I could play Call of Duty and be sweating, you know? Like, no, you cannot. I yeah, play, dude. I <laughs> crank the heat up. Sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> just drenched. Just like. <sighs> yeah. No, man, this thing is intense. Uh, even like, so obviously I don't do this one for exercise because there are like legit exercise programs on it. But um but there's the plank uh, and I'm sure everybody's seen all the YouTube videos of people like walking the plank. And uh, I had a buddy over a couple of days ago and set it up for him and uh, he got off and his whole face was covered in sweat. He's like from playing walk the plank. Yeah. Cause it's scary. Like it's scary, man. Have you played? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only scary. The one time that somebody pushes you. No, so no, I went, no. I went and I played walk the plank with X uh, in Vegas and I'm walking yeah. it. And he has a video of while I'm being so careful to walk the plank, him running up and pushing me <laughs> and me going like, Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny actually. But no, it's it's like if you don't like heights or whatever and you step out of the elevator and it's like a thousand feet down, like that's what your brain tells you, right? Yeah. Or even like the roller coaster and stuff, like it makes you nauseous. So like you just sweat. You heard it here first, folks, that Ryan considers walking three feet forward. On I said it to wasn't exercise. Before. No, no. Right before I said it, I said, this is not what I do for exercise. This is not what I do. Yeah, this is not what I do because I'm not even playing games that strenuous. Yeah, um, yeah, man. I, <laughs> no. Call of Duty. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, I'm it's waiting for week. the day I'm going to go. Oh, I hit my Beat Saber day in, you know. Beat that was Saber, my... there's one that you got to move around a little bit. But, yeah. uh, but my stuff's more intense than that. You'll see one day. I'll, see. I'll bring it to the next get together. Yeah, You'll be yeah. fine. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm excited to see so many people joining us for the 30 for 30 and posting every mm -hmm. day and stuff. It's been so awesome. Three people doing it. And so it's really great to see that people are taking the year to get in shape and uh, and have some fun doing it. So absolutely. Okay. So it is not too late for you to join as well. We'll be doing a uh, a big kind of list of all of the people who tagged us during the thirty for thirty. Obviously, if you tag us every single day with your during your exercises, like some people have been doing, then you have more entries in this. So you can totally jump in and get another twenty entries in uh, by tagging us a bunch of times. But uh, yeah, you should just join at least once post a workout, you know, and it's, uh, you'll feel better that day. And just uh, double up on workouts, do two or three a day. <laughs> yeah. Just do it so that you can hit the 30 for 30. Yeah. yeah. Do 24 hours straight of yeah, exercise. Yeah. You'll already be done with the 30 for 30 at that point. That's it. That's it. <laughs> So. Yeah, if you do 15 straight hours of exercise, then, you know, um, you already hit your, um, your 30. 30 for 30, 30 for one. Yeah. Um, but I can't wait for today. We've got an awesome guest this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, I know her pretty well, uh, I would say, but uh, we're going to get to know her a little better today. Yeah. yeah. So. We'll see how well you know her after this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's scared off, doesn't want to work <laughs> with you anymore. Um, so let's bring her in without further ado. The man. The myth. The woman. The legend? Gwen. The myth. The myth. The legend. The wonder. Oh, no. Welcome to the show. <laughs> what was that? That was a pretty good intro. It was a right? good intro. It was right? beautiful. Yeah, it was a pretty yeah. good intro. I'm bringing you guys in for all my stuff. <laughs> it just, Ryan and I both going like, Oh, uh. yeah, like, are you saying it? I, I get you guys didn't are know you how to say it? my last name. Is that is that what happened? Yeah, no, no, we just mumble and yell everything, anyways. So. Mm, but, perfect, uh, I love it. 
How's it going? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Not, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, I did some 30 for 30. You did some? Nice. I did. Mm -hmm. I, I walked. I feel nice. like that counts. I oh, played yeah. with my niece and nephew. That's got to count. I There's remember you tagged us and said, does this count? 100%. But um, yeah. what are these entries for? Uh, oh, the biggest, only the latest biggest, and greatest of okay. whatever we want to send them. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Mystery it'll be, entries. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Oh, I well love mystery it. entries. Oh. It's like, you never know what's going to show up. Yeah. The prize is that you gain <laughs> fitness in the end of this. Oh, I can't bring up. Yeah, I can't. That's true. So I'm in my basement because I've got my laser engraver going. So I don't have. <laughs> and it gets oh, worse every time you guys have a woman on. <laughs> guys. It's because we came up with the Thanks man with the legend, like the t-shirt right away. And it worked out great. And then we had so many gentlemen on that we kept saying it. And then every time we'd now we just say it. It's just our now, intro. Yeah, and I really keep pushing. A, it needs to on. start with the man, <laughs> even though it's yeah, a woman, I which really throws a monkey wrench in this, this whole equation. I tried. I said the woman, the myth, the legend, but he started with the man. So it, uh, that's well, fun. yeah, because you're the man. When is the man uh, yeah. and the woman? Um, <clears throat> Just being a woman does not exclude you from being the man, you know? Yeah. That's fine. True. I'm not offended, guys. As long as she's not offended by it, then we're not offended by it. So we're all good. Um, so Gwen, <clears throat> yes. let's get let's get right down into it. You are the magic assistant. Correct. Uh, I mean, what for people watching, what does that mean? So um when I took the name, I was uh, careful. I was also advised, um, but I was careful to not pick the magician's assistant. So by taking the name, the magic assistant, it means I can assist with any sort of any, anywhere in the realm of magic, not just mm. magician specific. So, um, I also took it so that I'm, it's pretty ambiguous. Like I can work with anyone. Uh, so what I do ranges from on stage getting cut in half, uh mm. backstage you know helping out in props outside of props prop management all that stuff magician management uh sometimes you guys are you know like need a little help sometimes <laughs> like, get organized <laughs> um, huh? and then i go and help off stage as well like social media marketing so that that was my original background was uh marketing and social media i did a, a lot of marketing for live events um whether it be handing out gum at the mall or, you know, uh, working like a big hockey, hockey, outdoor hockey event for, I think it's Rogers that does it. I don't remember, but worked for way too many brands to, <laughs> to know all of them, but I did that. And then that kind of transitioned to some social media and all that stuff. But yeah. Nice. 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 Well, that's awesome. Now you've worked with a bunch of magicians. Um, uh, I mean, currently, well, Gwen works with me uh, <laughs> part time, part time, so, which is awesome. Spoiler! <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, Gwen helps me kill it, uh, and, and it's helping me kill it in the future and stuff. So she's been uh, incredible so far. So mm -hmm. far. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, your big crime spree. <laughs> she's really helping you kill it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just. She's yeah. carrying out the bodies. It's That's been it. a great That's partnership. Just Call of Duty. Someone's yeah. got to, Someone's got to do it. Yeah, man. When I'm sweating playing Call of Duty, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to be there. How is Ryan as a boss? Be honest. Uh, He's great. Unorganized. Okay, no, no, no. But let's be honest, okay? It's just us now. It's okay. You can say what's on your mind. How's it been? Blink twice if... Okay, we'll bring him back. I would have done the same thing. I would have kicked myself out. <laughs> I would have said, be honest. But, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, but Gwen, what other magicians, if you're okay to say, who else have you worked with? Uh, I've worked with a bunch uh, here in Calgary that uh, some people know, some people don't. So I got my start working with Ryan Pilling and Yates Wong. Um, they were kind of the first two to put me... Um, in real shows. Brent Smith is the first one that put me into an illusion. Uh, he is the owner of the Vanishing Rabbit Magic Shop. Mm. Um, and then I've worked with uh, different magicians in the States at conventions. I've worked with Sean Farquhar. I've worked with Lance Burton. I've 
you know, now I work with Ryan Edwards. Uh, <laughs> I've kind of done all kinds of uh, all kinds of random random stuff, and it's it's fun because then it's never, you know, I'm never bored. It's never the same thing twice, and I'm happy to travel and go to conventions. So uh, Ron Saylor has used me in conventions before. Um, I shouldn't say used me because that that sounds terrible, but uh, he's hired me to be. In, in tricks on stage for uh, competitions before. So I've actually won some awards assisting. Mm. So that's kind of fun too. Uh, so yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. So behind doors, who's the <laughs> worst one to work with? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm Everyone okay. is wonderful. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> and just yeah. uh, that's so awesome. But So do you prefer the on stage on stage facet of being the the magic assistant do you prefer to actually be like involved in the illusion or do you prefer kind of the working behind the scenes and orchestrating um you know marketing the show that kind of aspect like what is it that you you know prefer i like being on stage uh mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's fun i think there's something um very special about it uh because you get like the audience reaction mm -hmm. and even if I can't see the reaction sometimes, uh, depending on which trick I'm in, uh, you can still hear it. So that's, that's kind of a really neat thing. Cause you know, you don't always get to, you don't always get to see what you look like when you're in it. So at least if you get to hear it, then you know, it's going, it's going okay. <laughs> or if you're practicing, yeah. like I've rehearsed somewhere, I did a sword suspension in a room full of mirrors. So once the swords got taken away, the magician said, okay, now look, look over and you'll see yourself floating. And that was really cool nice. and a very weird feeling. Uh, like you like your virtual reality. I like yeah, that you know, all of a sudden you just fall. You're like, oh. like, I'm like, I know that I'm like floating, but I don't see myself floating. Then you look over and you're like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> How is that possible? Mm. Mm, uh, so awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. So do you have an illusion uh, that you've worked in that you like love to do? or that you absolutely hate to do. And, and the funny thing is, cause you said with the audience, you know, you not being able to see the audience, it instantly reminded me of the prestige when he mm -hmm. does the, the door, right? And yeah. he's under the stage and he's taking his bow under the stage as the uh, double is up on stage. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear because as a magician, most of the time you're on stage, you know, and, and so you, yeah, but it's a, it's interesting to hear that perspective of it. Oh, for sure. Um... I say it often in a lot of my uh, interviews or chats because this question does come up a lot. So I feel like a broken record, but I do like the zigzag um, because you do get to see the audience reaction. So you get to see their yeah. faces kind of go <gasps> like once you're zagged out. And mm. that's pretty cool. Um, I also like, uh, I like origami. Uh, I like the way that it looks. Mm. I don't necessarily love being in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do love the way that it looks mm. on stage. Mm. I have I have tried to get in origami before. Yeah. Uh, and I'm six one, six two, yeah. like two hundred pounds, and try to fit in. And that is not a fun illusion to be in. Uh, no, it's not not always the most fun. <laughs> I, I used to work with an illusionist back in the day as well. And so I tried quite a few of the illusions, like uh in some babe, I tried. Uh, I tried Eclipse. Eclipse, I got st like stuck. Like I made it halfway, and that was it. <laughs> it's like get me out of here. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's crazy. It's it's super super awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, once you're, uh, yeah, I don't. I've never had the feeling that you have. So being on the stage and not, mm. you know being the one that's inside every that that's actually let's be honest that's actually doing most of the work mm -hmm. right um and that's why I mean, we feel i i said it in my lecture uh i lectured at the ibm and i said you know if uh if the magician is sick technically i could pull a guy out of the audience and mm -hmm. walk him through what to do like <laughs> i'm gonna go in this box you're gonna put a sword through me and then you're gonna pull my stomach out and it'll be great like It'll be great. you know <laughs> um and i'm and i'm just teasing with that but uh i did used to be told that you didn't need to be called box jumpers as an assistant uh because people take a lot of offense to that mm -hmm. but i said well why not just start calling magicians box pointers then 
because mm. you guys get to yeah. point at the box and say, ta-da, look what I did. I am a professional did, box pointer. <laughs> You like that's box pointer? Really yeah, I like box pointer a lot. Yeah. I think that's yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm a professional box pointer. Yeah. yeah. Or what if you saw the problem? act at Blackpool last year, the professional scorpion pointer. Yeah, he was just. <laughs> I didn't see that. One. It was a guy. <laughs> 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 it was a guy. <laughs> You're on your own there. <laughs> yeah, dude. There was a guy who was like, "This is the black scorpion," and then they wheel out this silver scorpion <laughs> it was like oh okay well we got a problem here first and then it was just him sitting in a chair and pointing as the women he's, did everything and it was like on. this is uh, some serious gymnastics happening and he gets to yeah he gets a front row seat <laughs> professional box pointer yeah that's awesome that's awesome no i mean that's a crazy that's a good thing is like obviously whoever the magician is and the assistant is hopefully they're working side by side hand in hand uh and doing the show because there's obviously there's a magician is doing a lot of storytelling and stuff like that but if you're doing illusions without the assistant you pretty much don't have an illusion show mm -hmm. um so yeah it um yeah you can't have one without the other so i think they it should be hand in hand or the magician's assistant instead of you know like you said a box pusher or something like that or a, a box jumper so do yeah. you do you find that and without naming names do you find that in general the magicians that you've worked with in a live capacity are very appreciative and uh, respectful of the their assistant because they understand the importance of you to the show or do you find that there's maybe a different attitude towards um, uh i consider myself things. really lucky i find that um the majority of the magicians that i've worked with have a lot of respect for the assistants and they mm. they That's treat really the assistants yeah. quite kindly and you know make sure that rehearsals are um you know happening because <laughs> mm. you can't just go out there and and wing it yeah. um so it's good because they'll put in the time they'll put in um the effort and they'll put in like if you need to make a costume change or if you need to make like any sort of adjustments like i've had magicians before that have gone in the trick and noticed like mm. nails poking out <laughs> when mm. i didn't because <laughs> i'm a different size um yeah you're like we're just gonna tape this stuff up how did you not complain about it and i was like because i didn't notice it but yeah. you know so it's uh so That's i've had good, some yeah. some really some really great magicians that I've gotten to work with over the years. And that's a, like, I've worked with a bunch of illusions and stuff before, and I, I was the illusion engineer on a show. So putting them together and stuff, but they're not always like the greatest made. Like they really don't care all the time about like what's going inside of this box. It's like, as long as the outside looks painted and pretty, and then it's like, it's good. There's not usually like a lot of padding and stuff like that. So it's like a very comfortable fit. Yeah. Um, and so, there should be padding inside some of those. There should be. I know. I, like, way more padding. I've seen so many people do um, like, um, uh, whatchamacallit. Now I'm going to forget the name of the trick. Um, wow. Uh, anyways, they, they do this. I'm not an illusionist. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an illusionist. I do mentalism. Um <laughs> uh, but uh, they do this uh, illusion and I've seen so many uh, people post on Instagram and stuff with like, look at, I practiced this illusion today and like bruises all up the legs or all mm. up the arms and stuff. And it's crazy. It's like, like you said, the magician never really leaves the stage with full of bruises and everything else from jumping around the, the odd time I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, it seems like it happens a lot more with assistance because yeah, you're asked to do some stuff that's, pretty insane sometimes mm. well we're typically also smaller and we're wearing mm -hmm. outfits that maybe you would see the bruises whereas magicians that is true. yeah tend to not wear yeah. those types well, of things on stage yeah. me and blazer the male, the male magicians anyways the mm -hmm. female yeah. magicians they can wear whatever they want but yeah me and blaze are going to end that trend we next yeah. week are going to start skimping performing down. in the nude uh, is yeah. our, That's our new strategy those they already That's already taken. taken. Yeah, it's already <laughs> taken. All right, so we're performing almost naked. Almost naked. <laughs> we're the almost naked magicians. Perfect. Boxers and Perfect. socks. There you go. Boxers That's, and socks. That's, That's yeah. actually our name. Our initial name: boxers and socks. And yeah. card tricks. Yeah. Boxers and socks and card tricks. Perfect. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, you think it's time? 
I think it's time that we get to know. Yeah, get to know her a little bit better. Be scared. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you should be. Um, now let's get <laughs> let's get this rolling. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here it no. comes, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time. It's time for twenty questions. It's time for twenty questions. Yeah. It's time for twenty questions. It's time for twenty questions. Yeah. Put two minutes on the clock. 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 Here we go. Ooh. You ready? Man, you didn't know I could sing, did you? No, I love the music. Oh, so he's I got those pipes. Soundtrack. Yeah. Can no. we market Ryan for more singing engagements? Here we go. I am going to do mentalism, speaking, and singing. Mm -hmm. Dynamite. Maybe all in one show. I do love, though, that Tigger T said that she would pay to see that show. Nice. Yeah. Boxers, that boxers show. socks, and card tricks. Boxers, socks, and card tricks? I mean, <laughs> we got to write it, man. We got, we got this. So. I mean, like, you don't have a lot of plates in the air already. <laughs> come yeah. into a theater near you. <laughs> nah, Ryan's got so much free time. <laughs> Easy. Oh, yeah. So, Gwen, we are going to go back and forth, rapid fire, asking you questions. We're going to try to get through as many as we can in two minutes. Okay. Uh, so we just want honest, good answers uh, or the best that you can. Um, and just Are they yes or no questions or just like? No, no. actual oh. questions. It starts in three seconds. Two, one. Dream vacation destination. Heinen Islands or Iceland. Biggest pet peeve. Um, nose pickers. Biggest mistake during a performance. Uh, a piece of the illusion was forgotten, so I almost fell off. What always makes you laugh? My dog. Secret talent. Cupcakes. First time you ever saw a magic trick? I don't even remember. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? To fly. Dream performance venue. Anywhere in Vegas. Uh, most cherished memory. Uh, my niece being told that she was going to come into the world. Favorite food? Popcorn. Favorite movie? Top Gun. What's the worst job you ever had? Oh, tricky. Uh, I worked at a movie theater and I burnt myself almost daily, but I worked there for like six years. Oh, so it's like best and worst at the same time. Favorite magician? Too many to pick. How am I supposed to pick one? Matt King. Matt King for sure, actually. Matt King always. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? A new car. Uh, what's your most highly recommended magic product or book? Uh, I really love the Magician's Assistant book by Jan Jones. If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? The Prestige. Would you rather feel like a potato or look like a potato? Feel like a potato. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? More magic. Uh, favorite toy growing up? A little snail. That was like a little car. Favorite sports team? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Oh, look at that. Wow. A Canadian has the answer for that wow. question. Wow, with time to spare. Build it. Wow. Oh, my, my nephew would get mad because I should have said the Calgary names. Oh, no. Ooh, Toronto Maple Leafs, of course. Gosh. Oh, he and I fight about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's six. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'd like I'd like to remind the audience that Chris Kenner made it through eleven questions. Yeah, uh, well, someone last made it through all twenty with time to spare. So someone a couple days ago though only made it through eight, didn't they? A couple days ago, a couple weeks ago. Mm. Who was that? Someone was like they only made it through made... eight. Was it um, magic? Was magic? it magic or was it was it Max Major? Because I oh, feel like he elaborated man. on yeah. so many he's answers. Like, he's like, I'm going to kill this. I'm going to make it all 20. You told me there was a time limit. Like, I wanted yeah. to get all of them done. You <laughs> think most people would. A time limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the name of this game is answer all the questions. That's it. God. That's it. Um, um, now, okay, we have a question from Tigger T. Uh, said, yes. what other book do you like that isn't magic related? And do you prefer audiobooks? Oh, uh, I do like audiobooks. Uh, a book that's not magic related. 
you're lucky because I'm in my library, so I can just try and. Oh, see. nice. Um, okay, they're mostly all magic related. Can I can I pick a different magic related book? Yeah, totally. Okay. Right. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It can be I like related the Georgia or Wonder, um, mm. which is like a biography about the Georgia Wonder. I also have uh, beside me because I've been doing some work on it. The one on um, Adelaide Herman, Queen of Magic. That's a good one too. Nice. The Elusive Moth is really good. I really like biographies. So uh, I did like the Neil Patrick Harris, which I know is mm. not kind of magic, but also not magic. Um, but his autobiography was fun because it was a choose your own adventure one. So you get to like get at to the end of the chapter and then you got to pick what? where you went next in the book. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Um, so Blaze might be too, uh, really too young cool. to remember choose your own adventure books. Yeah. <laughs> They stop making those. No, books. I used to love the. Uh, I used to love the um, the Goosebumps books, you know, because you could always yeah, like, yeah, just go through and then completely change it, and it would be like, oh, you encounter a genie. What, what do you wish for? Turn to page like ninety five. You want this? Yeah. And either way, you were screwed. Either way, you were always gonna get like a bad outcome. Um, but that's awesome. So it's like choose your own autobiography. Yeah. Is that what it um, is? Neil Patrick Harris, choose your own autobiography. Your own yeah, that's pretty oh, I see it. Yeah. Uh, Brady really had a really cool. Comment. He says, "I like Where's Waldo on Audible." It told me where he was right away. <laughs> Brady, that's it's a sick one. You that gotta add that to your comedy set. Read by, <laughs> um, by Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Where's Waldo on Audible? <laughs> Please miss that's that really whole good comment. Uh, Grady's on one, but yeah. This <laughs> I do like audio books. Oh, yeah. And, no, I, saw, I saw Grady's thing. That's hilarious. Yeah. this And I see that this Neil Patrick Harris one is read by him. The uh, That's really interesting. Narrated by Neil Patrick Harris. And I like that he's got the magic theme already in the uh, the audible photo right here. Oh, that's the book cover. He's got him pulling out a hat. Yeah, the book cover. Nice. nice. Well, that's really cool. I'm definitely my... going to check that out. Audible recommendation for the week this is a classic, classic of business. This guy is <clears throat> world renowned, Mr. Timothy Ferris, with the four hour uh, work week. Four hour work oh, week. nice. That's a good one. Who wants to work more than four hours? Read it. It's a great book. Uh, New York Times bestseller over and over again. So, uh, recommend mm -hmm. downloading that. And Gwen, do you know where you can get some free audiobooks? Uh, Libby. Uh, no. no. Oh, no. Libby. Incorrect <laughs> answer. Audibletrial.com <laughs> forward slash magic. Uh, oh, the one the, the on the bottom of the screen. That I get the one that's screen. scrolling at the yeah. bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's a good one. Right right there. There. Audibletrial.com <laughs> slash magic. And you can also partake, uh, as I will be, in checking out the Neil Patrick Harris Choose Your Own Autobiography narrative. Yeah, that sounds Patrick pretty Harris sweet. Stuff. That sounds really awesome. So, and check out the four hour work week. I want to listen to that as I well. I want to know how the autobiography works in an audio book. Yeah. You yeah. Cause you can't adventure? flip the page. Yeah. You know, that, it, it reminds me though, there's a new uh, Netflix uh, TV show out. It's a TV show or a mini series called Kaleidoscope. And so every single person that has a Netflix account, it's put in a different order. I mean, obviously there's like eight episodes or something, oh. so it can only be put in a certain order, but everybody has the last final episode, but the other like seven or whatever, how many of our episodes there are, are put in different. So you, everybody watches it differently, um, which is pretty cool because apparently any way that you watch it still makes sense, but it, um, but it takes mm -hmm. you on a different kind of curve. So uh, oh, highly recommended it. I binged watched it uh, through the night a couple of nights ago because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't sleep. And so, uh, yeah. Did out. you like um, the Black Mirror one, the Choose Your Own Adventure that was on Netflix? Do you remember that? The Bandersnatch? Uh, no, I haven't watched that. Oh, you didn't watch it? Oh, that was actually really fun. That was really entertaining. Yeah. yeah. It didn't work with my TV uh, oh. when it first came out, and now it works with my TV, but I forgot about it. So yeah, I was I'm just I was it. just thinking in my head when he said that. I was like, oh, there was the one on Netflix where you were supposed to be able to choose things. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the one. I'll look what it is it, what's it called? Bandersnatch. It's by the people who made Black Mirror. Yeah. Okay, Anderson. I'm gonna remember that and watch it um, 
3 a.m. this tomorrow. 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. But yeah, so uh, if you're interested in audiobooks, check out audibletrial.com slash magic. You can get some free ones, try it out. And uh, yeah, you can, can also support join the us. Show, so. and, uh, yeah, support the show as well. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but it supports us. And uh, yeah, they have thousands and thousands of audiobooks for you to choose from. Expand your brain. Be more efficient with your time. If you're commuting, listen to an audiobook. Grow your brain. That's it. So what scientifically proven. Thirty minutes of exercise. Thirty oh, minutes of exercise. Listen to your audiobook. This is a great there idea. You go. Yeah. So there you go. Efficient. Yeah. Saying that, I now know that my laser engraver is done upstairs. So I'm going to jump into the studio because mm. it just will look a little better than down here in the, in the crappy nice. light. Um, <laughs> so can you send me backstage, and I will. Uh, I'll hop up yeah. upstairs. All right. See you soon. We'll see you guys soon. All right. And he's so gone. now now we can really answer that question though about how yeah. it is to work with him. So, <laughs> so How long have you been working together by the way? Uh just a couple months. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you known Ryan in general? Um like years? Years. Yeah. For me it's kind of like all a blur when people ask how long I've known magicians because mm -hmm. like you know, for you, like I met you at a magic live and then I don't see you again until the next magic live. So it's yeah. like, oh, I've known you for a couple of years, but, but yeah. I've known you for a total of five hours in two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I've known you for a couple of years, but I've also only known you for like a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So for Ryan, it's more a behind the scenes kind of thing rather than an on stage yes. assisting kind of thing. Are you still doing a lot of on stage work as well? Not right now. Um, I do have a day job here in Calgary, which is uh, where I'm from. Uh, but uh, I'm gearing up to do a lecture in Blackpool on assistance. Sweet. So that's, awesome. that's kind of fun. So now I guess I'm doing some of the lecture route, which seems that's to be very exciting. That's awesome. <laughs> how it goes. And it's very surreal, uh, but I'm very excited. So, yeah. Yeah. So what drew you to the magic space in the first place? How does one become the magic assistant how does someone end up working with a bunch of magicians i'm very small <laughs> <laughs> so attribute number one attribute first number one. that's this is the top of the list on your job application is small i'm very small uh my smile is a little bit uh insane um <laughs> no it's a great growing smile. up i always hated it because it takes over like half my face uh but that's also good for on stage that's great um honestly. But no, I uh, I knew a lot of a lot of performers in Calgary. Like I've always kind of been in the performing arts. Like I, mm. after high school, I took uh, some courses that. Anyways, I took German, French, Spanish, Japanese, linguistics, oh my and gosh. drama. That's, <laughs> that's so. Now, how much of those various languages did you retain? Uh, like zero. Like zero. If you, don't, really? if you don't use it, you lose it. Like I can say like a few different words in like each, but that's about it. What, then I what back of to those Chinese. languages would you say are you best with? Uh, Japanese was the easiest for me to learn. Japanese. What did you say? You went back. I, I cut you off. I went back and took Chinese. Oh, that's what I'm learning now. Because I just didn't torture myself enough doing five languages all at once. Oh, um, so, cool. so then I did that. I went back to school for teaching to teach um, like kids. Uh, did drama for early childhood education, music, all of that. Did drama for adults, all that stuff. And then went to school for cooking. And then eventually went to school for social media and public relations. Because I was like, well, you know, all those all those languages didn't really, that was not really um, <laughs> useful. Really, didn't really build towards something there. <laughs> like, um, I just kind of took things that I thought sounded like fun. I'm able to ask where the bathroom is in a whole lot of languages. <laughs> that's well, there you go. That is useful. That's, that's, that's very useful. useful. Yeah. You can order food at a restaurant. That's all you yeah. need. Yeah. That's, that's it. Uh, I missed if you guys asked this question, but I think this is a good question. Did you ask Sigur T's question already? Uh, kind of along those lines, uh, um, oh, okay. which was like, you know, how does one become a magic assistant and you know, how did oh. you decide to go down that path? But yeah, Tigger's question specifically is how did you start magic and when did you decide to become the assistant instead of the magician? Which is a ah, bit of a so different twist. I started magic as an assistant. So I, mm. it was never, I was never learning to be a magician. Mm. Uh, I was in the magic shop in town one day and 
the owner said, you're like the perfect size to be an assistant. Have you ever thought about doing that? And I said, no, but that sounds so fun because I like to know how things work and <laughs> what better way to know how things work than to get right inside to of get it. Inside of it. Yeah. Uh, so he said, tell you what, if you come by and you fit in the costume, I'll teach you a trick. So I said, mm. okay. And I went by and I fit in the yeah. costume. So he taught me a trick and then he sold it uh, the day that he was, he was doing a big thing called mega magic Saturday. So it was like all of the mm. magicians from Alberta and like surrounding showed up because he was doing a magic auction and he had pop Hayden lecturing Mm. Uh, so it was like this big event and in my little non, not so magic brain at the time, I didn't really realize how big the event was. Uh, so I was there dressed up like an assistant. Cause of course I put his costume on, tried to curl my hair, had big, big red <laughs> lips, horrible fake eyelashes. Like they were really bad. <laughs> and I was there the whole day in this velvet and mesh outfit. Nice. With the magicians coming after me saying, oh, are you an assistant? Like, I haven't met you before. And I said, well, no, not yet, but I want to be. And so mm. then they were all like, well, this is a very strange way of going about it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's awesome, though. That's awesome. <laughs> if you want to be a magician assistant, go Dress to Magic Live. You want. <laughs> go to, like, Magic Live and just stand there and people will be like, oh, who are you assisting? Who are you assisting? No one yet. No one yet. <laughs> no, Ryan. When you go to a magic convention as a woman, <laughs> typically they say, oh, would you like to pick a card? Who are you here with? Uh, that's that's true. Mm. Why are you, what got you suckered into coming here? And then I usually <laughs> respond with, no, I'm I'm here for me. And no, I don't want to pick a card now. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah please don't make me pick another card, please. No, thank it, you, sir. <laughs> it is always bad. It's always someone's wife that, uh, you know, disgruntled wife that's uh, come to the, <laughs> to the event that gets picked. I, I always love when they do like a gala show and the same person gets picked like, eight times they're like mm. oh miss in the front come on up it's like we need to just say like save the first two rows or something for people that are not magicians mm. that uh, that or you know something like that so that they can just sit there and enjoy the show and get picked mm. because... yeah i started sitting towards the back uh, yeah. now at conventions because i used to sit towards the front because i was so excited to be there mm -hmm. and i still am but I'd rather sit for like towards the back so that a layman can get a chance to go on stage instead. Like not that everyone's going to pick me cause like they shouldn't. Um, but if you see a girl that's smiling, you know, typically that's who they're going to go for. And if they don't know me, then they could pick me. Uh, yep. There was a show here in town where I was picked on stage. I was mm -hmm. watching it with a bunch of magicians. I got picked, got on stage. The magician said, so what do you do? And I said, I'm a magician's assistant. And he just looked at me and he said, well, shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. You look good. oh, can I swear on this? Oh, no. Yeah, no, no, you absolutely oh, yeah. can. Absolutely <laughs> can. Usually it's after hours. We yeah. used to do the show at uh, 10 o'clock, but uh, it's, yeah, no. it's 10 o'clock somewhere. It's 10 o'clock somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. So that's our new saying. It's 10 o'clock somewhere, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's no, yeah. no skin Fine. off our backs. Um, um, but, so... Uh, now, the thing is, like, as we're talking about that, when you said you went up on stage and then you mentioned to the the magician that you were a magician's assistant, I start getting images in my mind of like Burt Wonderstone and <laughs> um, and and the him trying to, you know, be inappropriate with or whatever with his assistant um, trying to make out with her or something. And you don't need to talk uh, from your experience, whether you have or had not, you know, had any of those kind of experiences. But do you think is is that something that is a problem in magic? Is that something that you've heard a lot of stories about? Is is that a real like, you know, concern it, about it how magicians be. assistants are treated? It can be for sure. Uh, I think that um, things have gotten like a lot better over the years. Uh, but when I first started, um, yeah, you could definitely see some of that happening to mm. even just not even just assistants, but like audience volunteers on stage. Mm. Um, yeah. I've been to different shows where I've seen very uncomfortable volunteers on stage. Mm. Uh, and I always just feel bad, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and I've been in like the audience for those shows, but I just feel like, Ooh, uh, like it's a little cringeworthy. So I think with things like Burt Wonderstone and like, making the joke about it in a very public way mm. um i think stuff like that actually maybe has helped because mm. it brought a light to the fact that that's something that was going on mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, there's a show right now. My friend just got back from Vegas uh, and there's a show in Vegas right now where the, the magician makes some super inappropriate uh, comments towards mm. a, a female a spectator on stage. Uh, and he was like, this is terrible. Like, it's so cringeworthy. I won't say the person's name or the show and stuff, but um, but it, it was bad. Like, and I was like, like he, I know this person is joking or apparently joking, but it's just like it, you know, just inappropriate For taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like you expect better from them, uh, from for where they're at in their career. But, um, but yeah, and and does it every night. So, hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, Is there crazy. a lack of? I think there's a lot of a lack of general self awareness and things. Uh, a lot of times, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just oh yeah. Not realizing how they're coming off, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know that the question always is asked, like, why aren't there more women in magic? But there are women in magic. They just they just don't get talked about mm. as much as the men. And if they do start getting talked about, then the men usually I mean, and I hate to say this, you guys are men. Uh, I don't want anyone to take offense to this. It's just my own observation. What? I'm what? Not what? Opinion. No, no, say it, say it. But uh, I think oftentimes, like the magic that they're doing gets overlooked for oh you look great and it gets more focused on appearance mm. versus talent and that's you know it, it i think it's getting better but it's kind of sad to see that it's so appearance mm. uh, based because you don't see the females saying that about the men yeah because magicians are known for being great looking right <laughs> <laughs> just this podcast <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hashtag 30 for 30 hashtag join in yeah, hashtag join in 30 for 30 please <laughs> please, please join the baby. challenge um yeah it uh it, it that is an interesting comment because there is a lot i don't want to i don't want to throw the guys on the bus but there is a lot of guys in the magic community that maybe don't take care of themselves the greatest sometimes mm -hmm. um and so it's interesting that uh yeah it doesn't yeah it doesn't go the opposite way and stuff as well um, yeah but, but like men, if you guys yeah, posted a photo that. of you you know doing a show or whatever the first thing people aren't gonna say oh you look so good or oh what a great outfit or oh like yeah mm. a wooga like that <laughs> Hang on, Grant. I do get some yeah. pretty inappropriate ah, dms after I post photos sometimes no. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. Uh, but after the episode, I'm gonna post. We'll do. We'll test it yeah. out. Yeah. But when a, a woman magician posts something like that, that is the immediate focus is about the appearance and everything, rather than what they're actually doing. Um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's that's it's the world. It's how it is. Um, but I think that more should be on like celebrating their successes. Like, oh, hey, you just rocked this gig at the magic castle or you just got this gig at house of cards or you're on the cover of a magazine or you know you're doing this awesome podcast like those are all things to celebrate versus just oh hey you look great like 100 mm -hmm. oh, yeah 100 um, it's not well, just it's not just magicians like the whole world right now is just superficial so mm -hmm. and that's the way that it is some yeah, people need wow. to remember that everyone's human and now no one knows what to yeah. say or how to say it and if I they know. can say it yeah but, i probably uh, offended everybody every, no, everybody no, no, does that no, but so i good. i did like this uh chaotic coin said did ryan just call me fat <laughs> <laughs> not at all not he at just all. wants you to do the 30 for 30 chaotic he just wants you to do the 30 for 30 come on man you, I, you got know it. what you got it Mark. I'm, come on i'm at the, the heaviest i've ever been so uh, I'm I'm trying to take care of myself. So I'm, I'm trying to become the heaviest I've ever been. I'm working. Yeah, on. we're going the opposite direction. <laughs> going I'm, opposite direction. I'm doing my VR uh, cardio and mm -hmm. blazes. And I don't believe in cardio. Yeah, <laughs> it's a myth. Um, so now here's one thing: is you mentioned your experiences with magic conventions, and just from my experience at magic conventions. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is why we don't have very many female magicians <laughs> involved, because I'm like, any woman that is excited about magic, especially a young woman that wants to get into magic, will go to a convention, and I imagine it would be a very a big deterrent to them wanting to pursue this because of the way that I see them <laughs> treated at conventions. And so 
has your experience at conventions in general been overall very positive and or do you feel like there's also kind of an atmosphere that would be uncomfortable for women to go to still uh no for me i've had a really positive experience otherwise mm -hmm. i wouldn't have continued mm -hmm. going to conventions yeah. um i started going in i think 2012 i went to imx first which mm. was oh, that was my first convention was it yeah. oh see we've known each other for a long yeah. time yeah uh and I loved it because um, I was one of the only females there, 100%. <laughs> I can say that. I mean, IMX, <laughs> you were the only one, Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> that was many years. Yeah. I was one of the only ones there. Yeah. Uh, but Joni Spina was really great. She saw me right away and she was like, hi, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm an assistant. And she was like, what? Oh, we need more people like you. And so her and I formed a friendship like right away. And it was, it was really cool because I just felt so welcomed because mm. she just like, I was walking around the dealer's room, kind of like a little lost soul, I'm sure. <laughs> and she just like glommed onto me. And then I was like, mm. oh, oh, people are friendly. Okay. Mm. And that was it. And then I could just nice. talk to anyone except nice. Matt King. I can't talk to him. <laughs> can't talk to him. <laughs> can't he, talk knows. To he knows, he knows I love him. That's good. <laughs> That's so I love him and that I'm terrified of him all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be terrified of a guy that carries around so many Fig Newtons? I mean, that's... Yeah. I mean, I do like, like super friendly. I mean, we can also flip that. How could you not be terrified of a man <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> carrying true. around that's a jacket true. full of Fig that's, Newtons? That is true. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, Just, hey, kids. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Mac. Uh, <laughs> oh, this one's been in there a little while. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's because Mac was the first big magic show that I ever saw in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So to me, I always say that Mac's like so famous. Yeah. Like Mac's like untouchable. Like he's like super, super famous. And Mac's a great guy. Like he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And he's so sweet. And he's just so funny on stage and off. And mm -hmm. I think it's great that like I get to be his friend. Like in Blackpool, I noticed that the floor kind of matched his suit. <laughs> so I was like, Mac, oh my God, lay on the floor and I'll take a picture and it'll be, where's Mac? <laughs> and if you, uh, if you listen to that on Audible, though, yeah. I'll tell you where <laughs> exactly. it is. Yeah. yeah. Where's Mac on Audible? Uh, he just tells you. That. You'll find him right you? away. Grady, that was a callback just for you, my friend. <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Mark said, well, I'm 30 for 30 with a box of Twinkies. So <laughs> I'm <offended. laughs> Uh, someone jules stern said who's max oh mac mac, mac, mac king. king yeah, yeah mac king the one and only uh playing at the uh excalibur, uh, excalibur now which is yeah. which is cool he, he was at har or harris for forever so yeah um so it's uh yeah i wonder i haven't seen the show since it's been at uh excalibur but i wonder if there's differences and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but uh yeah, i wonder I have yeah, to check I that out next either. time. Next time you're in Vegas, go check out Mac King. Uh, I think he does a show, what, at one and four, I think. Or that's what it used to be, I think. Uh, so go check it out. Fantastic show in Vegas. But mm. Do you have a favorite show that you've ever seen? Live? Yeah. Like a favorite magic show? Yeah. Yeah, Mac King. First one. Yeah, Mac, Mac King. King first, first one. First one that I saw in yeah. Vegas. First, first one. one. Just killed it holds everyone. a special place in my heart. Like, wow. it just... My girlfriend had taken me to Vegas... This is the story. And a lot of people know the story. And if he's watching, he knows the story too. But I bug him all the time. Uh, my girlfriend took me to Vegas. She says, oh, you like magic. So I booked us a room. We're staying at the Monte Carlo. There's some magician there. He's supposed to be good. So I say, great. That sounds great. And we go and we find his theater. And this magician named uh, Lance Burton has retired. Mm. So the theater is there, but there is no show. Mm. So we can't go. So I message friends back home and now I'm sad. And they say, oh, well, you should go see Matt King. So I say, oh, okay. So my girlfriend and I, she's a lovely best friend. She's been my best friend for over 30 years. And she's like, okay, we'll go see this. So we go see Matt King and we laugh our asses off like all afternoon. It's so good. And then he's out there after. So I got to meet him after. So I got a picture mm -hmm. with him. And now I think it's funny because like, I've never seen Lance Burton's Vegas show. I, I was about to say, you've never seen Lance's mm. Vegas show, which no. I was lucky enough to see it probably. I, I want to say it was probably the last year that uh, that he was doing mm. the show. Wow. Uh, and uh, absolutely incredible, um, you know, with the chandelier dropping and stuff. And yeah, 
it's absolutely stunning show. So mm. someone retire. Lance, if you're watching, massive fan, massive fan, have been for my whole life uh, pretty well. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think it was probably the last year you were there. Uh, it was like my first trip to Vegas. So we packed in, I think, nine magic shows in three days or something. And yeah, it, uh, yeah. Lance, if you're watching, just bring back the show. Um, yeah, what, what's going like on? The doves and the chandelier. You can do it. In mm. person. I, yeah, I want to know, like, here's the thing that I loved about Lance's show and that I criticize every other magician that has his own theater for. If you own your own theater, why are things not happening around the theater, right? Mm. Like, you honestly own the place or, like, you not own the place, but you're, you know, renting it. Some people own it. Some people own their own theaters. And mm. there is nothing that happens throughout the audience or anything like that which I'm so disappointed in. Like, mm. I feel like as someone that travels for shows, it's in, it's more impossible. Yeah. But even if I can set something up to be like on a wall or to do something out in the audience, then I'm going to do it. But if you own your own theater or you're in a, a, you know, a venue that only you are performing in for, you know, then you kill it. Like make, you know, the pictures on the walls do something and stuff or, or whatever, make, you know, someone in the audience levitate on, on a chair or something like on a seat and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like Lance was like the first one that I seen that did something that was spectacular in the audience, like over mm -hmm. top of the audience. So with the chandelier falls and stuff, and then he's in it and comes down. It's yeah, it's incredible. So I just really love Phantom of the Opera. So I mm, want so to it's a great moment. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's like that. That should happen more often. Uh, is that we're we're using props and stuff like that than mm. than just on stage and what can be done there. So, but, uh, yeah, and you've also worked with Lance quite a bit, right? And yeah. in what capacity? Uh, I've helped him on stage. Um, I got to be the first assistant uh, on stage at the Montecito uh, mm. Magic Castle because he was performing mm. there. And I've helped him backstage at shows, at conventions, um, all kinds of nice. all kinds of random stuff. I got to go to Blackpool with him and the team, so that was really fun. Nice. Um, that was I'm, 20. I was going to say, you're going to Magi Fest at the end of the month, correct? I should be at Magi Fest, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, I, Gwen, I want to go. I might. I, you might have to come down. I'll, we'll drive down. We'll, we'll drive down, Ryan. I can fly yeah, to hell. I do. I do want to make it happen. Mm. I'm thinking about it. We'll see. See if I this this coming Magi Fest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you do it's it, like, I'll do it. Yeah. It's in like three, do it. three and a half weeks. We do this uh, again, just live, like all three yeah. of us. Yeah. That's got to get. We got to get tickets. That's what. We, yeah, we got to get tickets. But um, but yeah, I've been debating whether I'm going to go or not. So we'll see. Yeah, Magic Live is one where it makes sense to not get a ticket because it's like, oh, we'll just hang out with all of the magicians and we'll be in Vegas. But Magic Fest, it's like, oh, I'm going to just go to Ohio. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. I've never been to uh, Magic Fest, so I don't know what to expect. But uh... oh, it's it's a great convention. It's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite convention. It's just really well run and, mm. and stuff. I just... Uh... I know I have to do a lot of work around here and I don't want to leave the baby for too long. So yeah, yeah. I've only heard good things about Magi Fest. So yeah. And no, Abbott's I, I would kill to go to Abbott's. Yeah, that's one I haven't been to yet, but oh, uh but I've heard it's yeah, amazing. It's on my list, man. Um Tigger T said, Gwen, how is your last name pronounced? <laughs> uh it's French, so it's pronounced OJ. Oh, oh, so we really oh, screwed that one. Yeah, I've been there. saying it bad <laughs> wrong really, for like the, 10 years. Maybe, the <laughs> woman, the myth, the legend, the OJ. I always say Gwen like Auger. That's what I said too. Yeah, which yeah. isn't that like a uh, like a weed whacker or something? Uh, like, no, an auger is what drills holes in the like ground. <laughs> oh, you know, it, hey man, just, I got that it was a type of machinery. It just you know, reminded like me umbra, under yeah, my a weed whacker. <laughs> yeah, one is massive and puts holes in the ground, and the other one is <laughs> like cuts blades of grass. <laughs> it's like one in the, the same, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It does remind me, Gwen. Uh, yes. Blaze, I was talking to Blaze one time. I was doing some work in my backyard, oh, no. building something. Uh, I think I was building my fire pit and like this big flagstone pad and stuff. And Blaze says to me, yeah, 
Yeah, we're uh, we're moving a gazebo and stuff in the backyard uh, right now. I'm like, no, Blaze. There's four giant men in your backyard lifting this up and moving it, and you're sitting in the cow on the couch on your computer. He's like, yeah, but we're doing the work. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I did like, not. Like, I did not double down. Yeah, that I was not, doing it. He, was, he was like, <laughs> he tried to play it off. Like I was like, he called me. I'm outside sweating, working hard, lifting stone, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm. We're moving our gazebo right now. Like we're moving the gazebo. We, and, dude, we were. <laughs> yeah, you, were, was... you, you were having your family's gazebo moved by a bunch of men <laughs> that uh, were there to move things. So my dad was moving the gazebo. <laughs> yeah, and okay. I was watching. You okay. were related to him. <laughs> I was encouraging them. Yeah, to move. The, they couldn't have done it without me, man. Guys, you guys want some water sprayed on you? Just you want some water? <laughs> bring them you know, some nice cold lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah so man good. we worked so hard that day <laughs> yeah <laughs> blaze broke a sweat numerous times i was unboxing my package Call from murphy yeah <laughs> what what uh yeah what different gimmicks i should play with <laughs> so, chaotic coin says someone has to scream at the workers <laughs> come on man it's an integral part of the building process blaze of grass <laughs> blaze of grass man that's it's <laughs> uh See what I do every Tuesday afternoon, Gwen, now. It used to be Wednesday nights, but uh, Tuesday afternoons is just full of jokes. It's a great time to come on and chat magic. Yeah, and, it's a much uh, better time, life. man. Yeah, but, it's fun. Um, Dude, I'm going to find some kind of auger that has something to do with weeds, man. And it's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the best tool for digging out weeds? Oh, weed auger. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's auger? It's OJ, yeah. Oh, All right. Well, Gwen, uh, we're going to change your name on here to like OJ. <laughs> well, I always joke uh, in Vegas there's the casino O'Shea. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, it's my Irish last name. Nice, nice. Uh, O'Shea? Yeah, totally O'Shea. What is it? You. O'Shea McG McGannigan's or something like that. Some some weird one. That's but, definitely uh, not actually, how it's pronounced. <laughs> no, I, that's where uh, that's where uh, Luke Jermea, I think, used to perform there. Uh, was at O'Shea's. Mm. That's where he had his residency uh, in Vegas. Uh, O'Shea. So. Yeah, O'Shea. So we need to redo the intro. <laughs> yeah. Can we <laughs> try and ADR just, that one in? Can we we're just, gonna, yeah. We're going to start all over. Um, so let me turn the laser back on. It's a good thing um, we weren't live for this part. So we can yeah. Yeah, we can go Perfect. live now. Let's yeah. start the, off yeah. of the episode. Let's start right now. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's time for 20 questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I love the song. <laughs> can you at least make up 20 new answers, though? Like, yeah. It's different. Just so that way, there's no, this. no oh, doubling. Yeah. Um, now, we do need to ask you the most important question of the evening. I think it okay. we would be remiss if we did not um, ask you. We we would be if, canceled. Literally be canceled kicked off the air. Not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like So I, I don't know if she's ready, though. I mean, she's been working for me for the last three months. So, I mean, I've probably got her close to the level of readiness close but, to the level of readiness but yeah, no one's but ready for this no, no one nobody's ready for no this one. so ready or not here we come lasagna lasagna what's your favorite genre of lasagna meat lasagna veggie lasagna plain lasagna saucy lasagna What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Keller! Lasagna! Cheese! Lasagna! Bolognese! Lasagna! Lasagna! Blaine! Houdini! What's yours? <laughs> Did it just say Houdini? Such a good that's song, a, man. That's the disappearing, uh, vanishing, uh, yeah, chained up <laughs> lasagna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, locked, right. uh, locked in the microwave lasagna, where you can't, you put it in, you just can't get it open. That's mm. the Houdini. That's uh, the Houdini. 
Oh, actually, uh, the, if you, if you're part of our Patreon, you have full access to our Discord channel. Uh, but Grant actually posted uh, a new music uh, kind of not video, but like a soundtrack on there, which was metal lasagna and uh, is like a lasagna song all in like super hardcore metal music. It was pretty crazy. Mm. Uh, so yeah. when? Yes. Auger. <laughs> what <laughs> is your favorite genre of lasagna? Uh, the cartoon lasagna from Garfield. Oh, oh, that is a new Matrix. answer. Matrix. That she's in the VR. This is that. That is a new answer. Oh, you can eat as was... much of it as you want in VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because it doesn't yeah. affect your real life body. Because I've, I've it's been fake. living. In, I've been living. Because it in doesn't VR affect your real body. <laughs> <laughs> I still sweat when I eat a lot of it. All right. <laughs> I, get, I get the meat yeah, you sweats. can sweat playing chess dude doesn't mean it's exercise um, so oh, this one oh tigger t reminds she, yeah he, uh, she said that uh eric casey said the same thing Ooh, okay. oh sorry gwen i thought it was the most original answer but yeah. uh even Sounds even grant cool, said yeah. golden nugget but uh well, it's yeah, fine because I actually it. lost the file for the Eric Casey one. So it <laughs> might be the only podcast that's not uploaded to oh, all of awesome. the streaming platforms. That's a, well, so it's sorry, a YouTube Eric. exclusive because I can't find that audio file. We'll, we'll have it back on because we'll have Eric back on. He watches the episodes like every week. He's usually yeah. he's tuning in. So uh, Eric, if you're yeah. watching this, just switch times. it's Blaze's fault. You know, as a friend, I'd never do that to you, man. Dude, I'm sure that I downloaded it. However, comma, I cannot find this file. <laughs> uh, so we have so, a, we have a follow up question. Gwen, if you were to bake in VR one Garfield lasagna, yeah. and then you were to bake a second identical Garfield lasagna, mm -hmm. and then you take said second identical Garfield lasagna and place it atop the first. Okay. Do you how know many how... lasagna oh, do you have? Have... One or two? Are they in separate pans or have I taken them out of the pan? Oh, it she's is got now... a Takumi answer. It is now atop the other lasagna, no pan in between them. One lasagna. One lasagna. One lasagna. Confident. That's it. Confident. You know why Gwen. she has that level of confidence? Because Gwen wholeheartedly endorses our lasagna mathematics hoodies available at allaccessmagic.com slash shop. One plus one equals one in the world of right. lasagna. That's the only thing it can equal. I love it. In infinity lasagna equals one. Yes, she uh, is worthy, Tigger T. She is there worthy. You go. Gwen, we hope that you'll be repping that sweater at Magic Live this coming year. Uh, and uh, and we'll have the sea of lasagna. Wouldn't it be great to have like 200 lasagna sweaters or something? Like just walk into the dealer's room on the first night and everybody be like, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. What? Stan would have a heart attack. He'd be like, he would just be questioning, like, what does lasagna have to do with with Magic Live? But well, because the first be night there's always a theme, so we'd be breaking the theme. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, you got to break the theme. This is this is a takeover of the Magic Society. <laughs> so a takeover of the Magic Society. That's it. We're taking over. It only uh, works if you cater the event with lasagnas as well. We we did uh, do a lasagna eating contest. Um, at Magic Live, but uh, but it was just myself versus Blaze, mm -hmm. uh, which ended poorly for Blaze. Uh, I will say that. <clears throat> I mean, poorly is one way. To, yeah, yeah, it ended poorly. It did. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was quite bad. Um, yeah. I've also just broken my uh, my Discord, so I'm stuck. Uh, not I, this I, my OBS. I'm stuck with the I lasagna like, mathematics. I was like, why are you not smaller now or bigger now? <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I, like, I don't know what happened. I was like, we've seen this. Um, 
That's awesome. Well, Blaze will now be miniature the rest of the show. Um, yeah. Let me go back great time to my, fix myself really quick. Great time to advertise our lasagna sweaters. <laughs> so, uh, so Gwen, you, uh, you know, I, I know we talked about going to Magi Fest. Uh, any other things on the spectrum? I know you said you're going to Vegas uh, this week. Yeah, uh, I'm planning to go to Vegas this weekend. Are uh, you? Uh, are you seeing? Uh, are you seeing the show? Uh, I'm going to go see the David Blaine show nice, uh, nice. on Saturday. And then nice. hopefully maybe I'll get some Matt King show. Nice. You know, if you're in Vegas, you should probably go see Matt King. Should probably go see Matt. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then just see some friends, hopefully. So it uh, should be fun. Should be quick, but not super quick. Uh, nice. Not like 24 hours like I did with <laughs> Jessica Jane. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> we have a little bit more time this time. So that's, that's okay. And then, uh, yeah, Magi Fest, uh, Blackpool, where I'm lecturing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to ask you about, too, was was your lecture. Because we, Blaze actually lectured there last year. Uh, and so you were lecturing on being a magician's assistant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you give us any sneak peeks of it? No, no. Box pointers. <laughs> Box pointers. No, I don't know. That's, that is actually one of the, that's like the best line. I think, you know, this year when we are at the end of the year, uh, Blaze did a great job last year and did like a reel of everybody's like couple of second or a minute or two of everybody's episode from the year. Gwen, I, I think box pointer has to be yours. It's gotta, <laughs> it's gotta be, it's first time I've ever heard it. But it's fantastic because, I mean, as a mentalist, I'm always saying the same thing. And I'm like, oh, oh magicians, eh, illusionists, all you guys do is stand on stage and let the assistant do all the work for you. So, but, uh, but yeah. I, I, did you stand I on stage it. and point at a box? That's no. it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> you should actually just have a bunch of boxes on stage. I uh, think like talk to the people at Blackpool and be like, can I just get boxes all different sizes from everywhere and just stack them all up like behind you and stuff? That'd be fun. It'd be great. And just be like, oh. and then there's this one. <laughs> and there's this one. <laughs> this is a fun one. Uh, that would be so good. <laughs> I'll ask them. That's a good idea. You should 100%. Yeah. I mean, it'll get people laughing anyways. So, oh, yeah. But, uh, Chaotic Coin says, buy, buy the hoodie so it fixes his computer. <laughs> uh, I want my own hoodie with a bunch of boxes on it. There you go. That, that, we yeah, actually... I'm still here, but I'm still small. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze, you have obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I have been doing my 30 for 30, and Blaze hasn't because you can see he's still small. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm small as hell, man. <laughs> he he tried um... to get bigger this last 30 days, and he hasn't done it, so um yeah it's <laughs> so good but um i was gonna ask you something else gwen and now let's i had a brain this. fart when blaze this. popped back in there and uh i can't remember what it is so um gwen here's a question because i know you personally and you seem like an absolute ball of energy i know we chatted about it last night on our team call <laughs> that you are like going a hundred miles an hour like she the thing is Gwen will send me a text and be like, man, you're so busy. You do a thousand things in a day and I can't keep up with her. So Gwen, how do you do it? How much coffee do you drink? Uh, I actually only drink like one cup a day, sometimes two. Um, but then I get jittery. So I can't, I can't really, mm. I'm too small. I can't drink too much coffee. It just gives <laughs> me the jitters. <laughs> Well, so how do you keep your energy going like a hundred all the time? I haven't talked to you ever where you've been like down. Uh, I think it's just like, you just have to kind of turn yourself on. Like I'm just on. It's like a, it's like a little mm. button. Mm. Just have to want to do something. So if it's something that I'm passionate about, then I'm definitely like a hundred miles a minute. Yeah. Um, and magic I'm passionate about so I try to go like a hundred miles a minute. But if it's yeah. something that's like trickier for me, then I get a little less than a hundred miles a minute. <laughs> like cleaning my house, mm, probably a little less. It's a little less. Pretty messy behind me. Um, but... <laughs> um Brendan Tibbs <sighs> said, uh, and I know we, we kind of answered this already, but uh, uh, he said, any input why there aren't any more women in magic? There are women in magic, Brandon Tibbs. 
they just don't get talked about as much as the boys. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would say that a hundred percent, but it, it definitely is a male dominated profession. I would say, um, in for terms sure, like, of just numbers for sure yeah well the books but, are um, geared towards men anyways right yeah. like a lot of the books are geared towards men get this out of your pocket put this borrow in. a lady's kerchief from the audience yeah. Yeah. yeah ah you've read some tarbell i see yes <laughs> yeah but uh so th that's a question though is so <clears throat> do you think that more books and stuff then should be geared towards uh, women or are there something that something that the general magicians group men and women could be doing to um showcase uh magic uh, as potentially a career and stuff for for younger kids and stuff uh i think there's a lot going on right now that that is showcasing like there's that new book hocus pocus practice focus uh written by a female uh, magician and centers on a small female child who is learning mm. magic so that one's yeah. really great uh if you don't have it and you haven't read it i highly recommend reading it it's amy kimlatt i might be saying mm. her name wrong but um look it up it's super cute it's super great i sent it to my niece um i it's it's fantastic nice uh, i buy that for my neighbor who uh who has a, a daughter now as well so yeah I like that. uh so that one I would say I highly recommend. There are other books on magic. Like I found a ton when I became an aunt and they're not all male dominated, which was something that I was surprised to see because I know in our industry, that's typically the conversation, but I don't think the conversation changes unless we change the conversation. So instead mm -hmm. of saying like, why aren't there more women in magic? Why aren't we just saying like, Hey, did you see what this woman in magic is doing? And we don't need to even say woman in magic because mm. Then you're we're all just magicians. Yep. Yeah. So we're all just magicians. Yeah. Um, I think it gets talked that way a lot. And I've said that before as well. Like it should just be magician. And we've had the conversation even with mag magicians in general calling the audience like layman and stuff mm -hmm. is like a kind yeah. of a derogatory name to call call people. Yeah. Like, oh, the layman. <laughs> like, yeah. It's better to just say uh, audience members. Yeah. Like even in uh when we talk women in magic, I'm trying to find the date that she started. Um, but Adelaide uh, Herman was a woman in magic because she did the bullet tr catch trick. Mm. Uh, January 28th, 1897. Because wow. her husband had passed away. So then she took it over. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's like you said, it's just something that needs to be talked about more and stuff. Uh, and even with conventions and stuff, like a lot of times, like you'll watch the gala show or something and it is, it's all men and stuff. And so maybe it needs to be, you know, but even the merchandise at the conventions, yeah. like the t-shirts, uh, Tannins had female Flamery. shirts this yeah. year. I was so pumped. Like mm. you have no idea how pumped I was. I think I like. Mm jumped up and down, squealed and like hugged them and then brought all of the girls that I knew <laughs> to the mm. booth. And I was like, you guys, there's girl shirts. Like yeah. I can get a girl size shirt. Cause like nice. for me, I am small. Men's shirts are just too big for me. Yeah. Uh, but girl shirts, oh my gosh. Like I was, I was so mm. pumped. Like the guys at Tannins probably didn't know any of them. But... Good job, Adam Blumenthal mm. at, yeah. uh, at Tannins Magic. Um, I, I've mm -hmm. asked them every it. year. Every year they're like, oh, do you want a shirt? And I'm like, oh, do you have girl shirts? And every yeah. year it was no one. And this year they were like, yes. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> That's awesome. Am I dreaming right now? <laughs> uh, I know Tigger T was asking, uh, she said, uh, she's mentioned it a few times, but how tall is she? Five foot, half an inch. Mm. Five foot, half an inch. That, that is half. perfect for magic assistant size. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The doctor did say once I was five one, and I was like, I'll take it. Yeah. And then ever since it, I've never been five one again. So I feel like that was just. You just had bigger really shoes on that day. <laughs> it's mm. like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, well, Gwen, um, like I said, I know you're doing Blackpool. Any other conventions that you want to speak at and stuff, or that. Is it something that Wherever. you foresee yourself going on the road and doing that that more and more? Is that the uh, yeah? Why that... not? 
I sure. already like to be at conventions, so yeah. it does make me nervous because typically uh, on stage I don't have to talk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm doing a lecture, it's not just like this where I get to like chat and laugh. Uh, I'm still probably going to laugh because I get nervous, <laughs> but, uh, but that's okay. That'll be I fun. I think people yeah. see like my passion come through. So mm. even if I laugh or stumble or like turn bright red, um, they'll probably be okay with me. It'll be all good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing I'm gonna, coming uh, up. I yeah, let me say. I can give you a hand, Gwen. You're going to kill it. It's You'll easy. be fine. You'll kill Talking it. Talking on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people is not hard. It's just like, just like talking on the phone. I did it when I was a kid. Like, I used to be in plays all the time. But that's yeah. different because it's like... Doing lines. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, yeah, just whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a convention that I'm booked for coming up, um, and they asked me if I would do uh, one evening, do a lecture, and then the next day do a show in the morning. And I was like, okay, sure. Uh, and it was like a 15 minute set as part of their yeah. show. And then I, you know, I sign on and everything. And then I got sent, um, or I just checked the website recently for the schedule, and it says like Blaze. Uh, lecture friday night and then show saturday morning then lecture saturday afternoon and then show saturday night and i'm like <laughs> oh interesting i guess i'm doing two lectures at this convention <laughs> make, gotta make gonna sure my second lectures? lectures up to snow yeah they're gonna be yeah. different lectures yeah, yeah i have two different lectures but like it's just funny because uh yeah i did not expect that they were gonna do that yeah, yeah that's crazy yeah. um Tigger T actually said, this is cool. Tigger T said, the first woman that I found here on YouTube was Ecat. And it was because of her that I found this podcast. Uh, and I've been here almost every week uh, since her interview. So Thank you that's so much, that's cool to know. Ecat yeah. is so cool. Yeah. I got creator at FISM. And oh my gosh, like, first off, she's crazy nice. Mm -hmm. And she's crazy talented. Like, yeah. oh my I actually God. have to send her out a package because uh, she she hooked me up with the show earlier uh, in December, but uh, or November or something. But Gwen, uh, I didn't even think about it. I knew you were in Barrie last week, and Ecat moved to Barrie. What? Yeah, really? she moved from Montreal to Barrie. Sorry, I didn't even. So, yeah. As soon as you brought it up, I was like, oh yeah, or uh, Ecat's. Uh, yeah, she moved to Barrie now. Uh, so. I could have brought her my that's a strike, uh, Ryan. That's a strike against you. Nah, that's a strike against yeah. me. I'm sorry. It's Next strike, time yeah. you're in Barry, though, we're gonna Next all get together. Barry. So, but uh, which could be at the end of the month. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> so, but, uh, awesome. Well, Gwen, it's been so awesome having you on this afternoon. Um, I didn't kind of tell you how long it goes. I know we're over an hour already. Uh, sometimes we go for 12. Uh, so buckle up. Hours. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, we're working yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. But, 200 uh, questions. Let's go. Yeah. But I guess as, we, as we're coming to a close, a question that I would have would be, what would you recommend to, you know, young people that are interested in getting into magic, especially interested in potentially becoming magic assistants and how would you recommend they go about it? Um, you know, your, your strategy of kind of showing I up love yours. all dolled this, up this. and just like, Hey, I'm, I'm not a magic assistant, but I will be soon. <laughs> I think that's the best the best one i think that that's what yeah. everybody should do is just stand at the magic shop all day <laughs> like they say dress for the job you want guys that's yeah. it yeah. I did. <laughs> living proof uh i would say if someone's interested in magic to start getting involved like there's some really great opportunities for uh for younger magicians out there um i know the ibm has the uh, the teen seminar, which Lance Burton, um, Jeff McBride, and Larry Haas host every year, and it's free for the teens. So oh, nice. that's uh, that's one. There's um, there's another one for the teens that I'm totally blanking on, but there is another teen one that's coming up soon. I, I know Magi Fest does something. Is it Magi Fest? They do some. I I know it's. I think it's usually yeah younger younger. Mm, yeah uh, a group uh, but there because like, there's they, all kinds of stuff if yeah, you're younger the morning they can try and get into like a local magic club um join like a group like the ibm um or sam if you're uh in the states and you just want the sam canada's got the cam um i find ibm seems to be the one that's doing 
quite a bit in terms of conventions and like online activities for like just chatting magic or hmm. having discussions. Um, magic groups, if you're old enough to have Facebook, All Things Magic does a really good job. Um, they're really, really welcoming. They're really, really friendly. Um, and they've made it like a very positive space. Uh, so I find that one really good. That's Luke Dancy. Um, I say just like, just get out there and start asking. Like in terms of if you're going to find a magician and you're young, I mean, try to find someone that's like roughly your age, probably better mm. than working with like a, an older magician. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of an age gap on stage, unless that's what the shtick is, then that's fine. Like if it's a comedy act, then no big deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, Gwen, we got to get back to work. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we got lots of this afternoon, but uh, yeah, you've been uh, on cl the clock this whole time, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But, uh, but thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't follow Gwen, Gwen, where can they find you? Uh, at Magic Assistant, basically everywhere. I took it across the board. Nice. Nice. Best All right. So at Magic Assistant. Go find Gwen at Magic Assistant. Mm -hmm. Follow her. Give her some support. Uh, the links and in watch the description her. already. So you can check it if you're watching on YouTube. And so, uh, yeah. watch out for her lectures. And uh, uh, she's going to have more to come. She's going to be yeah. crushing it. So. so check her out at Blackpool. All well, right. thank you so much for coming on, Gwen. Keep crushing it. Um, and uh, now let's get back to work. Right. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you again to our patrons that join us at patreon.com slash allaccessmagic. And check out Audible if you're interested in audiobooks, audibletrial.com slash magic. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you very soon next week. Peace. Peace.